Hi, I'm Dr. Ayper Gökçe. I'm an orthopedic surgeon from Istanbul. Today's topic is an important ligamentous injury of the knee, anterior cruciate ligament, its pathophysiology and its structure. What is it? And does it require treatment? Are we going to find answers to these questions? My intention is to assist these patients in making the best informed decision possible regarding the management of ACL injury. ACL is abbreviation for anterior cruciate ligament. Femur, with other word, type bone, rolls over the plateau of the shin bone during knee bending. The bony structure of the joint is not sufficient to support enough osseous stability during motion. Therefore, four main ligaments are there to reinforce knee mechanics. ACL is the riskiest one due to its localization and function. The ACL runs diagonally in the middle of the knee, preventing the tibia from sliding out in front of the femur, as well as providing rotational stability of the knee. There are other anatomic structures, like menisci, functioning in harmony with ACL for stability. Detailed info about them you can find in further videos on this channel. Combined injuries with menisci and other ligaments are therefore commonly seen in clinics as combination. Additionally, patients may have rises of the bone beneath the cartilage surface. These may be seen on magnetic resonance imaging, MRI scan, and may indicate injury to the overlying articular cartilage. Injury mechanisms of ACL is mostly in a non-contact way, but the small percentage of it is caused by direct trauma by opponent player or objects. The trauma mechanism is often a deceleration with cutting or forceful pivoting or abnormal landing after jumping or getting out of control. This is a quite painful injury and players cannot continue to play. Swelling, pain, tenderness around the knee the restriction in motion and discomfort in walking. They feel their knees unstable. Physical examination is painful in early times after injury. Joint cavity is full with blood. Magnetic resonance images can help exactly to diagnose the severity of the trauma with checking the evidence of torn ligament cartilage. Meniscus injuries are bone fractures. In patients, tolerating physical exams, some stability tests are performed for differentiating the injury and evaluating the stability. Therefore, opposite stresses is given to bones of the knee for evaluation during Lachmann's maneuver and anterior drawer tests. Natural course of the disease without treatment results with weakening of the leg and thinning of the muscles around the knee worsening these symptoms of instability. Patients with a partial torn ACL injured with less energy are often favorable with the recovery and rehabilitation period, usually at least than three months. However, some patients with partial ACL tears may still have instability symptoms. Close clinical follow-up and complete course of physical therapy helps identify those patients with unstable knees due to partial ACL tears. Complete ACL ruptures have a much less favorable outcome without surgical intervention. After a complete ACL tear, knee joint usually incapable to cutting or pivoting type of maneuvers, therefore instability doesn't tolerate sports activity or even normal activities such as walking climbing. There are some rare individuals who can participate in sports without any symptoms of instability. This variability is related to the severity of the original knee injury as well as the physical demands of the patients during sports activity. Combined injuries of the knee have worse prognosis because secondary damage may occur in them having repeated episodes of instability due to ACL injury. With chronic instability, a large majority of patients will have meniscus damage when reassessed 10 or more years after the initial injury. 
Similarly, the prevalence of articular cartilage lesions increases in patients who have a 10-year-old ACL deficiency. Conservative treatments aims to decrease pain and swelling at the joint, rebuilding muscle structure or supporting stability. Physical therapy, strengthening exercises, medications was given. Also, hinge braces are used for external support to stability of the joint. And now, the treatment, surgical ones. ACL treatment are now usually repaired using suture to save it back together because repaired ACLs have generally been shown to fail over time. However, in cases by whom the ACL was torn on the upper part can be preserved with recent developed arthroscopic techniques. General practice for torn ACL is replacement by a substitute graft made of tendon. Source, source of these tendons are patellar tendon autograft, autografts come from the patient, hamstring tendon autograft, quadriceps tendon autograft, allograft taken from a cadaver patellar tendon, Achilles tendon, semitendinosus, gracilis or posterior tibialis tendon. Each option has to be discussed with the patient with pros and cons. Donor side pain, morbidity, healing capacity of the graft, rehabilitation differences, infection risks have to be considered in preoperative planning. All these types of treatments are performed under appropriate anesthesia in operating theater with arthroscopes. Each patient has to be informed in the postoperative period and rehabilitation protocol. Postoperative care. In the first two weeks after surgery, beside the wound care, it is stressed to regain full power, the knee and restore quadriceps control. The knee is iced regularly to reduce swelling and pain. The surgeon may dictate the use of a postoperative brace and the use of machine to remove the knee through its range of motion. White bearing status is usually allowed considering the severity of the injury. Crutches or braces may, braces may be used. Rehabilitation is very important with the cooperation of the patient. The goals for rehabilitation of ACL reconstruction include reducing knee swelling, maintaining mobility of the kneecap to prevent anterior knee pain problems, regaining full range of motion of the knee as well as strengthening quadriceps and hamstring muscles. The patient may return to sports when there is no longer pain or swelling, when full knee range of motion has been achieved and muscle strength, endurance and functional use of the leg have been fully restored. The patient's sense of balance and control of the leg must also be restored through exercises designed to improve neuromuscular control. This usually takes four to six months. The use of a functional brace when returning to sports is ideally not needed after a successful ACL reconstruction, but some patients may feel a greater sense of security by wearing one of them. Thank you very much for your watching.